Hello, and welcome to NASA headquarters. I'm Kate Calvin, NASA's Chief Scientist and Senior Climate Advisor. Thank you all for joining us today as we open the Earth Information Center here in Washington, D.C. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to thank the entire NASA Earth Information Planning Team, whose tireless work made what we are here to celebrate possible, and with support from our NASA leadership. And I'd also like to thank our partners, who you'll hear from today, for your collaboration and support. Um, so we're going to hear some brief remarks, and then we'll invite everyone to join us inside. So to start things off, I'm honored to turn this over to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the new Earth Information Center. Um, so that's not the only new thing at NASA today. So let's unveil the NASA worm. <laughs> Along with the blue insignia that you all are familiar with, uh, it is, uh, by the way, one of the most powerful uh, signals uh, of insignias, of logos in the world. Uh, whenever I travel abroad, I uh, always uh, take a little survey of which do I see most, the New York Yankees logo or the NASA meatball, as we call it. Uh, I think New York uh, Yankees insignia is more prolific. Uh, Earlier this month, over 100 million Americans were under air quality index alerts. The smoke drift from the wildfires in Canada was just the latest stark reminder of how the climate crisis is disrupting communities and putting our health and our livelihoods at risk. And the images of smoke stretching across the states and the borders that if you were here in D.C., uh, from my vantage point across the river at the Iwo Jima Memorial, I could not see the Lincoln just across the river. Uh, even more so, I couldn't see the Washington Monument. Uh, and, uh, and yet it's another reminder of something is happening to the climate. For more than 60 years, NASA has been using our vantage point of space to observe the Earth. And in just the last six months, NASA has launched a series of satellite missions. Now, this is just in the last six months, four missions. One called SWAT, to study surface water, including for the first time the elevation of fresh water, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the reservoirs. Tempo, to study air pollution. Emit, to study mineral dust and methane. And tropics, to study tropical cyclones and hurricanes. Uh, so this vital life-saving data is here. But do folks really know how to access it? And that's why we're gathering today. The science is clear. So is the fact that we're all in this together. Uh, the Biden-Harris administration has given us marching orders and that the data ought to be more understandable, it ought to be more accessible, it ought to be more usable for everyone, and that's everyone, everywhere. Today, we are opening this Earth Information Center, but it's only the beginning. Whether folks live in cities 
or on farms, in suburban areas, people are making decisions every day that relate to preparing for the impacts of climate change. We want to help them. We, collectively, we, all of the agencies represented here. Home buyers need information to assess flood risk. Businesses near the water need information on algae blooms. Farmers need to know where and when to plant crops, especially during a drought, or to know that a drought is coming, or to know that the rains, like a monsoon, are coming. Firefighters need data in order to manage wildfires and the Earth Information Center can empower them. It's the first of its kind physical and virtual space to engage and to underscore NASA's Earth science impact, to show people that our home planet is as we see it from space. And by the way, that's an incredible view when you look out the window of a spacecraft. You look at the edge, the rim of the Earth, and you see that thin film, and you suddenly understand that that's the atmosphere, and that sustains all of our life. And then with the naked eye, you can see how we are messing it up. So this idea of the Earth Information Center, which we want to share, first came to me because I'm familiar, NASA is familiar, with mission control. It's where we bring all the data into one room about a space mission for the launch, the landing, the mission. And so I said, why can't we do this with all this information on all of our assets? that are up there, bring it all together in a user-friendly way, and then don't just display it in one physical location, but make it available to everybody virtually, real time. And what you're going to see when you walk in here and see this hyper wall, you're going to see real time right now, information that is being beamed to the Earth from dozens of spacecraft about a particular issue. And then you will see the hyperwall will change, and it will give you additional data from other assets in space. And when you go on nasa.gov and get this virtually, you're going to be able to freeze the frame if that frame of the hyperwall is the information you're seeking. You'll be able to freeze that frame and use that data. And so what we have is bringing it all together. The Earth Information Center is just one component of our broader strategy to deliver science to the public and to decision makers who want science to inform their decisions. And so I want to thank everybody that made this possible. Uh, NASA astronauts Nicole Scott, who's here with us today, and Drew Foistel helped bring our immersive experience to life, and you're going to see that. It's another part in here. As you walk in, you're going to suddenly be in space looking down at the Earth. Our partners across the federal government, and they're represented here and are going to speak to us, EPA, NOAA, USDA, USGS, USAID, FEMA, and more. I don't like acronyms, 
But if I said all those words, it'd take me three minutes to say all that. And a big thanks to the NASA team who made this possible. For NASA, climate and Earth science missions are a part of our discovery. We are not just a space agency. We're not just an aeronautical research agency. We are a climate agency for the obvious reasons. I want us to think back to that prophetic statement in Christmas 1968 when Apollo 8 orbited the moon for the first time. And astronaut Bill Anders said, we came all this way to explore the moon. And the most important thing that we discovered was the Earth. NASA has been studying Earth since the Apollo era and will continue now under the Artemis era with the Artemis generation. So let us explore these new cosmic shores and protect this home planet. Both the 21st century priorities are ours now. Explore space and protect our own home. Both are more important than ever. Thank you all very much. For coming. Thank you, Administrator Nelson. Now I'd like to invite our partners, starting with the U.S. Geological Survey. So let me introduce Dr. David Applegate, Director of USGS. Well, thank you so much, Kate, and thank you, Administrator Nelson, for your vision uh, that has been uh, brought about through this Earth Information Center and for your commitment to engaging federal partners in this amazing effort. What an inspiring way to learn more about the Earth and what we do to safeguard it for future generations. I'm thrilled to be here with our Assistant Secretary, Tanya Trujillo, and our Deputy Assistant Secretary, Annalise Blum, to represent the Department of the Interior and Secretary Deb Holland, who sends her regards and appreciation. As the science arm of the Department of the Interior, the USGS is committed to delivering actionable information to help society address complex issues related to the environment, to natural resources, and to public safety. And in so many cases, that involves partnerships with our good friends at NASA, and none more than our enduring partnership, over 50 years of partnering on the Landsat series of satellites. This, uh, la uh, these are land imaging workhorses. They're put to use every day with thousands of applications in support of all of those complex societal decisions. With the la launch of Landsat 9 in 2021, we're bringing down more data and finding more uses than ever before. And planning's underway for Landsat next with its expanded spatial, temporal, and spectral capabilities as part of a comprehensive operational land observation program that leverages commercial and international partnerships. This is a partnership that will keep paying dividends for the nation and the world for decades to come. This physical and virtual Earth Information Center reflects the importance of putting all the amazing Earth observation data and science to use to help society. I'm excited to see how these innovative communication approaches can make the science more accessible and deliver actionable information so that we can reach those who need it the most, especially underserved communities. Thank you again for this opportunity to partner in this wonderful undertaking. Thank you. Next is the Environmental Protection Agency, and I'd like to invite Janet McCabe, Deputy Administrator at EPA, to speak. Thank you. 
Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. It is such an honor to join NASA here today and all of you to celebrate the brand new Earth Information Center, an amazing facility, an amazing resource, and goodness knows we need every single one possible these days. Um, I wanna congratulate on behalf of Administrator Regan and everybody at EPA, um, to everybody who's worked so hard to make this project a reality. And thank you, Administrator Nelson, there you are, right in the middle. Um, for having us here today for your vision um, and for the partnership between EPA and NASA as we all work together to tackle uh, one of the most pressing, if not the most pressing environmental challenge of our lifetime, climate change. Climate change affects every single one of us, every aspect of our lives and livelihoods, whether it's wildfires across the American West or the Canadian East, as it might be, to record shattering hurricane seasons in the Gulf and East Coast, to historic flooding in the middle of the country or drought, take your pick. Americans are seeing and feeling the impacts of climate change with increasing intensity and regularity. There's not one single person in this country that doesn't experience the impacts of climate change, whether they know that or not. No small town, big city, suburban or rural community that is unaffected. The urgency presented by this societal challenge, this global challenge, requires us all to be laser focused on delivering results, or should I say satellite focused on delivering results, um, and make sure that we are leaving no stone unturned, no tool unexploited for good here, and no information not made transparent and understandable to policymakers, decision makers, and families across the country. And that's exactly what this amazing Earth Information Center aims to do. EPA is thrilled, as always, to be able to work together with NASA and with all the other agencies represented here and many others to be able to uh, join and bring, bring our data and our expertise um, and the people that we work with. Uh, we all have different constituencies, and so we all have ways of getting this information out even more broadly. From improved data visualization to expanding our understanding of natural sources of methane. We spend a lot of time on methane these days at EPA. The collaborative work that EPA is doing with NASA through this amazing resources will make a real difference in our effort to tackle the climate crisis. And I'm really proud uh, to be associated with it. Thank you again for inviting us here today, but even more congratulations on this amazing achievement. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome Eric Hooks, Deputy Administrator of FEMA. Well, good morning. Uh, Administrator Nelson, colleagues, thank you for being here. Administrator Nelson, thank you for your outstanding vision and your leadership across the interagency and really across this world. I'm honored to be here today on behalf of Administrator Chris Well and all of the FEMA family uh, for this historic event. It's great to, so, to see so many of our colleagues across the interagency because we are truly stronger when we come together. And thank you for the collaboration, the partnership that you exhibit day to day while FEMA executes on its mission of helping people before, during, and after disaster. The Earth Science Information Center will play such a critical role in sharing environmental data with communities to help them make more informed decisions on future climate risks. This is a priority for FEMA. This is a priority for NASA. This should be a priority for all of us. FEMA and NASA have been well partnered since 2010 in areas of climate change, planetary defense, space weather related issues, and together with NOAA and so many other partners, we work daily to keep people safe not just in this country, but really across the world. It's really an honor to be with you today, sir, and with all of you as we take on this extraordinary new adventure. And I've learned throughout my time of public safety that the more we explore the universe, the more we learn about ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. And now Noah. So please welcome Dr. Michael Morgan, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Environmental Observation and Prediction at NOAA.
Thank you and good morning, um, and congratulations to NASA on this incredible achievement. I'm excited to represent NOAA today as one of the founding agency partners on this unique platform. NASA's, environmental, NASA's Earth Information Center is a dashboard of selected environmental information that will provide rich data, stories, amazing visualizations, and experiences that will allow all on our planet to better understand the current and evolving Earth system. How and where we live and work, build and plant, are all impacted by our changing climate. Environmental intelligence allows us to better plan for this changing environment. Many agencies provide such data. Indeed, NOAA has a unique responsibility for providing reliable, authoritative, high-quality situational awareness, alerts on environmental threats and predictions. Our operational weather and climate services provide necessary information for individuals, communities, and the private sector to make informed decisions. But we don't do this alone. As you see with the array of partners here, in particular NASA, um, we can't do it alone. These partnerships are critical. Our partnership with NASA runs long and deep. From the development and launch of our own observing systems, our shared dynamical core for weather and climate prediction, to our investments in data assimilation. In recent years, our partnership with Earth Observations has grown and demonstrated new successes now that JPSS and GOES-R programs are operational and as the Space Weather Follow-On program becomes established. I appreciate NASA's invitation for NOAA to be a founding partner in this exciting en endeavor and look forward to the contributions that we and other federal uh, partners might make with NASA in making the Earth Information Center a success. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. Up next is the U.S. Department of Agriculture, so I'd like to welcome Dr. Marlon Eve, Deputy Administrator, Agricultural Research Service. Thank you, Kate, and uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, Administrator Nelson, it's great to meet you and to be here with you to celebrate this event. Uh, Secretary Vilsack sends his regards and his congratulations. The, at the Department of Agriculture, we have a long history of partnering with NASA, of working with NASA data. Um, our program offices use NASA data for drought monitoring, for uh, land cover assessments, for uh, many parts of the census of agriculture. And in my home agency of the Agricultural Research Service, uh, we use NASA products every day in conducting our research. Our scientists have worked together tools and platforms. And so I'm just thrilled to be here to uh, welcome in this new era of Earth information and uh, proud to represent the Department of Agriculture as a founding member of the Earth Information Center. Uh, I have said to, uh, to my leadership that ARS needs to be driving precision agriculture for all farmers, uh, similar to the way that Administrator Nelson mentioned that the Earth Information System needs to provide data and information to all Americans and to the global community. So I believe that working together, NASA and USDA and our other federal partners can really enable a new generation of agricultural production that's much more informed, data-driven, and precise. And so um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, excited to see the, the Information Center. And uh, once again, congratulations, Administrator Nelson. Thank you. Next up, we have Mike Mishner, Deputy Assistant Administrator, Bureau of Resilience and Food Security at USAID. Good morning. Thank you to uh, Administrator Nelson, Director St. Germain, and the entire NASA team for including USAID in today's launch of the Earth Information Center. Uh, it's also wonderful to be here with the leaders of the, uh, of the partner agencies. To the outsider, USAID and NASA may look like fundamentally different organizations. NASA's investments probe the very edge of the universe. USAID works on the ground with countries around the world to improve economic well-being and fight hunger and poverty. But USAID and NASA have found a sweet spot for working together in the application of satellite-collected data to the development problems and challenges that we face around the world. The two agencies will continue to build on our long history of working together, including with our flagship SEVERE collaboration and our work on the Famine Early Warning Systems Network, or FUSENET. As we work in the midst of the climate crisis with escalating impacts felt all around the world, 
The Earth Information Center is a magnificent display of the power of data and information that can be leveraged in support of managing climate risks and monitoring important carbon landscapes. Data and information play an important role in our ability to better adapt to climate change and mitigate its aspects. Congratulations to NASA on the launch and ribbon cutting of the Earth Information Center. This is an important demonstration of what public investment in science means for life on Earth. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'm happy to welcome Dwayne Roth, a farmer from Iowa, to share his experience working with NASA data. Good morning, everyone. Um, Dwayne Roth, I'm a Western Kansas farmer. Um, it's an honor to be here today, and I'm very grateful. Um, as I said, I am the fourth generation, but now my nephews, we have a succession plan. They are the fifth generation. We're hoping to work with NASA to get that sixth generation to the farm. Today, as well, we all have something in common. We're going to have to produce a lot more food with a lot less resources out on our farm in Kansas. And with NASA data, we can have the ability to do that. We're going to have to make sound agronomic decisions. For instance, when to apply water, when to shut that water off, what crop to grow. With the succession plan we had, I would like to go back to last year in 2022. It was the hottest and driest that Kansas had ever seen. We had crop failures beyond your imagination. So we're looking, if we can look in the future, temperatures, possible rain forecasts, we'd actually be able to maybe use less finite resources and keep them for the future generations. I never thought before where I have boots on the ground that I'd be able to use satellites, space, to help me make better decisions. So that flow of technology that we're using, we're, we're working on a system in Kansas that we already have in place, the Kansas, Kansas Geological Survey, where we can measure water, we can quantify it, we can solve it. So we know that if we can predict, say within a, a reasonable amount of what the temperature is going to be in the rain, we'll know when to be able to turn the pivot on, shut that pivot off. If we can just save a little bit of water on the front, a little bit of water on the end, that computes to millions of gallons of water. So I'm really looking forward to this today. I'm very grateful again to be here and um, looking forward to the future. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, I'd like to invite Dr. Karen St. Germain, uh, NASA's Earth Science Division Director. What a day. Thank you so much, Administrator Nelson, Dr. Calvin, uh, and esteemed agency partners. The Earth Information Center embodies a renewed focus at NASA on Earth science and bringing actionable science to decision makers at every level. We want people to see our planet as we see it, as a complex system of systems where we study the land and the oceans, the ice and the atmosphere, to see how a change in one area drives changes in the others. NASA's community of scientists and engineers is accelerating humanity's understanding of our planet's changing climate. And we share that scientific understanding with our sister agencies so they can provide new and better operational services for people, businesses, communities to mitigate and adapt to, to that climate change. At its heart, what you're looking at today is really about engaging, engaging with more people on Earth science to learn what we are learning so their decisions can be informed by science. Thank you. All right, Administrator Nelson, Karen, I'd like to invite you up for the ribbon cutting. I believe we have uh, um, Nicole Stott, Bob Gibbs, and Oceans West representatives are also going to um, help us with this ribbon cutting if you'd also like to come forward.
also like to invite our partners. It is, um, you can walk through up here, that way we can get you all in the picture for the ribbon cutting. all for joining us today. This wraps the ribbon cutting ceremony. So on behalf of the thousands of scientists and engineers whose work is featured here, I'd like to invite you to experience Earth as we do from space. So we're going to start with these guests and then we'll invite everyone to move in in waves so they can experience the center and there is a reception inside. For those of you looking for more information, if you're here physically in person, there are QR codes that will take you to a website. For those of you from home, uh, go.nasa.gov slash EIC. So thank you very much and welcome to the Earth Information Center. We are going. The history of this agency is marked with broken barriers, once viewed as impossible.